What do you like that uh, I speak in uh, my talk? Alberto said what you like, but in particular, the connection between uh, basic science, fundamental science, and uh, industrial application. Fine, it's a huge team. No, no, but you can also say something about uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Great. But speak also about the first industrial revolution, the second and the third. And I say, why not? <laughs> and uh, stress the connection between uh, humanities and uh, natural sciences. Fine. And also say what uh, you are doing now in Bologna. And say, OK. And after that, uh, you can speak also about the menu of this night. So that I try to put everything here. But let me say something about uh, the last words that uh, Aves said. Uh, consider that I am such a out of fashion <laughs> economist that I'm writing books. Disaster. I wrote also a book about history, about the unification of this country. A book out of the discipline. When I spoke to my students, to my assistant, to the people that is working with me, they said, you are lucky that you are an old man. Because we that uh, we are in career, we have to write articles in quoted book, in quoted journals, international journals in some American journals, in one American journal, Otherwise. one. Otherwise, we cannot have any career because uh, when we established in this, this country a national agency for evaluation, uh, the people of my discipline, they decided that to become professor of economics is not necessary to write book, but uh, is uh, useful and probably is necessary to write five five articles, and uh, frankly speaking, don't write books, because it's so old and out of fashion. So that I consider a privilege to be able to write books. And I hope that also my students became old professors to have the capacity to, to write books. But now, let me come back to what uh, Alberto Meloni asked me. Uh, there is a, a, a rich literature today about uh, innovation, about uh, industrial revolution, about modernity. But as a matter of fact that uh, the interpretation is essentially driven by technology. Technology is changing the world. But I think that if we are using the word revolution, that is a heavy word, we cannot reduce simply this society transformation to just a technology change. We have to go deeper in the analysis. We need other instruments to have to understand what does it mean transformation of society. And what does it mean, transformation of uh, human thinking? And what does it mean to establish new rules, new regulations? And uh, we have also to consider that the same technology can really obtain very different results in the different social context. Take the case of railways. In uh, 1830 was opened the first uh, railway line between Liverpool and Manchester. After nine years, also nine years, the same steam engine locomotives was used in uh, Napoli, in the kingdom of Napoli. The impact of the same technology was completely different. In uh, Liverpool-Manchester line, this line was built in order to transfer, to, tr 
transported. Goods, commodities, and final goods from the port to the factories was the expression of the change, of the deep change in the social structure of Britain, was the sign of the new classes of the entrepreneurs coming out of the old social structure in defining a new contest. The same machine, the same, was the same. They bought in Britain the same machine, was used in Naples. In Naples, the Napoli Portici was used by the kings, the king of uh, Naples, simply to take the court from Napoli to the seafront. What the way, simply, to show that the king was so strong that he was also able to take this new toy was nothing different than a toy. The same instrument in Britain was the way to change the social structure in Napoli was the way to reinforce the existing dominant class. It was the same, the same instrument. So that when we are speaking about look to the impact of technology, probably we have to study something more. We have to understand the political, the social, the economic context of the way, of the moment, of uh, the historic moment of the place, of the locality, when we have to apply this technology. And uh, when we speak of industrial revolution, let me come back to the first industrial revolution. I feel that uh, in the first line of The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith, that is a book that nowadays no economist can read, but this is another story. I think that there is a real strong sentence about modernity. The wealth of nation, the wealth of nations is not the treasury of uh, the king, is not the land of uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, but it was essentially the capacity to organize labor, human labor, skill, dexterity, and judgment skills, that is something that now we can call competence, but competence is not enough. The austerity is the capacity to use the hands, the capacity to use the hands in using our telephone, in using our computer, in uh, understanding what we are real doing in the moment. And judgment is the capacity to think about, is the capacity to, uh, to evaluate, to have an assessment of what we are doing in order to elaborate something new but the capacity to have a productive labor is related to the capacity to organize the labor. So it's a matter of organization. It's a matter of social organization. And uh, I feel that looking at this sentence, we cannot forget that the Industrial Revolution, the Industrial Revolution that uh, the wealth of nation, this inquiry into the nature and the causes of the wealth of nation is now considered the iconic publication, the iconic book of the first industrial revolution. Essential was possible because one hundred years before we had the real revolution, the political revolution, the fact that after a long struggle, a long war between the king and the parliament, the parliament won. Instead of having a, a king in the great behalf of the grace of God, we have uh, a parliament elected by the commons, by ordinary people. The revolution was the fact that ordinary people became the sovereign of the state, but they became the sovereign because they can use the different technologies, the different instruments that the time provided in order to increase their own personal power, their own personal position inside the country. Technology are relevant because somebody is 
capable to use it, but is also entitled to use it. And don't forget that before this glorious revolution that came after 50 years by the very heavy revolution, that revolution of Cranwell, of hopes, the year before we have another revolution, the scientific revolution, and the year after we have a strong cultural revolution. Because don't forget that in 1687 was published the real starting point of uh, modern science, it was the Principia Mathematica by Sir Isaac Newton that explained that the world, is the, the, the universe is in motion not because a god is pushing the stars, but because there is a gravitational system, a gravity system where independent bodies can move simply thanks to the relation among them. And mathematics was an instrument to measure this motion. But uh, in uh, 1690, John Locke published the two treatises on government that is taking this vision of the world and push that in uh, political studies. Also, the society is based on the possibility for independent bodies to move in a gravitational system in order to generate this motion. And any time that somebody is controlled in his own movement, the motion of the system declined. Why is it so important? Because we cannot understand the first industrial revolution if we, we are not able to consider the political revolution, the scientific revolution, the cultural revolution that created the contest to allow that that steam engine locomotive became the instrument for a change in the society, change in the organization of society. If we take just engine, if we take just steam engine, if we take just that instrument, and we are not able to consider that that instrument was real revolutionary because it was inside a contest of political, economic, social, human transformation. This is just a piece of steel, nothing more than a dead thing. And don't consider also that when uh, we are speaking nowadays about telecommunication, about innovation, about the uh, internet, about everything. We are able now to speak about my smartphone. And any time that I'm looking at my smartphone, I'm, I'm very serious about that because I consider that I am the smart person, not my telephone, but it's another story. Let me say that uh, we, are, we cannot have this telephone if we don't have Marconi here, just very close to Bologna, or Tesla, or Edison, they make experiments, they generated technologies, they transform technologies into industries. But we cannot have Marconi without uh, the fact that uh, 50 years before, Maxwell gave final organization to the different equations explaining explaining electricity and magnetism. So that is clear that there is a relation between the fact that uh, a person in his study wrote in a very abstract things like Maxwell equations and the fact that Marconi on the other side of, uh, of Europe was able to experiment those equations and transform that equation in a technology. But the relation between uh, the basic science, the fundamental science, 
the abstract mathematics and the application is very long and not linear. So that also when we are speaking about the impact, we have to take in consideration that also technology is a result of a long process. And that this long process can generate different results according to the context where the different people are working and studying. But it's also true that uh, when we're speaking about Narconi, when we're speaking about Maxwell, 1867 Maxwell, we cannot forget that that period was the period of uh, the rise of nations, the rise of socialism, was a period of turmoil. In that time, Europe was redesigned. And this is not a different story without, uh, out of the fact that we have a connection between basic science and applications. So that we have to offer the possibility to identify technology evolution as a part of the long non-linear story of scientific evolution, but inside the context that is clearly historic clearly uh, determined by social conflicts and by economic contrast. So that we have to provide also a sense uh, of reality also to the people working in science and technology. And this matter of fact of what you said before, Eric, that when we are speaking about our telephone and we're speaking about the future of our telephone, don't forget the, the basis of this research was at the beginning of last century. Max Planck article on uh, the physics of quantum was uh, published in 1901. 1901, more than 100 years ago, you are right. When we say, look that uh, we have to take in consideration that time is time and time is, means history. And history means people. Otherwise, if we not consider all these elements, we are living in a sort of dangerous present, hyper-present, where there is no past and no future. The only thing that is important is to stay immediately everybody in the same position. The myth of uh, globalization of science, you are right. When we speak of the globalization of science, it means that most of the people have to publish just on one journal in America. In one language. Exactly. Rather than English. Language. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly, exactly. And when we are speaking about uh, our telephone, consider that we cannot understand the present situation if you don't consider also how relevant was the change in the world in the last. 30 years. Consider that till 1989, we were living in a, a sort of global regulation based on two areas. The world on this side of the wall, the world on the other side of the wall, and a third wall, a residual wall. After that, we have 10 years. They probably have not studied enough and we have this area of globalization starting from the Doha Agreement when the, the third world became China, became Brazil, became, became the real competitors. And the end of this story, don't forget that when we're speaking this telephone, probably now is an old telephone. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's an out of fashion old telephone. My children cannot accept that they, they can phone with this phone, they can use this telephone. Consider that now the first, the sixth largest uh, producers, one is Apple, the second is Huawei, the third is Samsung, after that, so that an American, a Chinese, a Korean, but the fourth, the fifth, and the seventh, and the sixth are Chinese. Chinese. That means that, that there is, uh, in these last 30 years, a completely change also in the scientific context, in uh, the political context, uh, in the 
also in the, the human perspective contest. And uh, what is relevant is that, uh, of course, there is a completely change also in the use that we are doing of the same object. We are still calling this thing that I cannot show a uh, telephone, but it's clear that this is not a telephone. And you can see how rapidly increased the communication, the transmission of data, the transmission of uh, any kind of digital communication. The virus side is simply data without any other communication. And if you take one of the discussion that we have today, if uh, globalization is finished because there is no transfer of uh, physical goods, consider that it's true there are no transfer of physical goods because they are transfer of immaterial goods. But at the same time, consider that uh, this completely changed in a relevant economic fact <coughs> is linked also to a completely change in the day-by-day -day life of the people. I think that nobody one in this room 10 years ago can consider to become so dependent from his telephone like we are now that nobody is able to survive more than five minutes without using the telephone. Consider also how it's changed the sense of space and time in the last 15 years. When I was young, I was in Britain, and time by time I wrote a letter to my fiancé, and I was uh, say, dear, I'm thinking you, now in this moment. I send the letter, and after 15 days, she received the letter say, so do I. <laughs> if you send a message now, you're not able to receive immediately an answer. You became anxious. The anxiety start. I was impressed the, by the fact that uh, when uh, the king of France was killed uh, during the revolution, in the south of France, they received the, this information after 25 days. And we had, not many years ago, the idea to that uh, we buy the journals, the, 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 the newspapers, not the journals, the newspapers, the day newspapers, in order to have some news about the world. I think that now a day, Everybody, in any moment, want to receive the information from all the parts of the world. Consider how it's changed the perception of the concept people, which is my people. The concept of nation, the concept of territory, the concept of state and local. If local means that uh, I am an authority that I cannot decide because I am constrained by other behaviors, I think that also Mr. Trump now is a local authority. I think that all these things are relevant to understand the impacts of the in the yeah exactly everything say that we are global, but at the same time also we are much more local than in the past. All those things are relevant when we are speaking about impact, because not all the territories, not all the contest, not all the social contest can generate the same impact by the same technology. So that in order to have a good analysis of technological impact, we need more humanities. And this is relevant because if we don't consider the humanities necessary to understand the technology impact, we have a very biased perception 
of the real need of technology. And of course, we have to remember that when we are speaking about needs, we have also to speak about collected needs. Uh, the United Nations offered to us this uh, quite heterogeneous analysis of what they call global goals. But we can organize, organize these global goals in political, economic, social, environmental needs. And we have to take in account all the aspects. Otherwise, we have just the possibility to give answers, but we are not able to understand to which demand we are real uh, answering. So that we have to, in order to have a better, a much better capacity to assess the impact of technology to answer to these questions, we need a, a, a deep, large vision of uh, human development. What we are doing here in Bologna, we decided to invest in two areas. The, the first is so-called Bologna Big Data Technopole, and the second is the, the foundation of religious sciences. Why? Because I feel that in order to have a good capacity to manage big data, we need more knowledge about people, about transformation of humans, about transformation of society. And on the other side, I feel that if we have to work now at this huge amount of information regarding people, we need also all the instruments that big data can provide. So that on one side, we are working, putting together all the institutions that uh, are working on big data. For different historic reasons, most of those institutions are located in Bologna. Bologna, because it is traditionally the historic place of university in Italy. We put together the CINECA, that is the, na uh, the national consortium of, uh, among all the universities regarding supercomputing. INF, uh, that is uh, the national European network of uh, physics working on uh, nuclear analysis. ENAF, that is in the National Institute for Astrophysics, the National Institute for Geophysics, all the physics that you like, and uh, all the universities in the area, all the universities, all the institutions. And we discovered that we have in this town more than 2,000 people out of the university and out of the companies working on uh, big data. And uh, we decided also to apply to receive uh, here in Bologna the database of uh, the <coughs> European Agency for Medium Range Forecasting, the, the agency, the European Agency for Climate. Putting together this capacity, this structure, we consider to have uh, put in together CINECA and uh, uh, INF, uh, INFN and the new machine, the new Presa scale machine uh, offered by the in, uh, one of the four machines uh, that we can be established in Europe. We have uh, the largest supercomputing capacity in Europe, but also taking into account uh, the machine of uh, the climate agency, probably one of the two or three largest capacity in the world. We put together also the other institutions, and uh, now we are focusing on climate change, health and aging, production innovation, humanity and society, sustainable cities, security and cybersecurity, and education. All these issues that are so crucial for the development of science, that are so important for the development of technologies in the future, must be read through 
the lenses of humanities. Climate change means how we are expecting that the world is changing. The migration problem, the food problem, Earth and aging means that our society is different from the society of my father. Production innovation is relevant, but also is involving people. Sustainable cities means the capacity to have a different kind of collective life. All these things can have a science and scientific development if we are at the same time to have a social in human analysis able to fill of content these analyses. Those are all the, the institutions that uh, we can to put together in the same place, that is uh, the old uh, tobacco manufacturing, and we're now we are promoting this big data foundation having the role of doing what uh, you say, you know, that is uh, Multi inter multi transdisciplinary research. Inter multi transdisciplinary research is not uh, just uh, something for scientists. It's the only way to avoid new monopolies, to avoid new closure, to avoid the science became inessential for the development. Something just for a number of people, but not relevant for most of the people. For this reason, our strong investment is uh, on uh, the foundation sponsoring this event. Because we consider that uh, religion is in some sort of the core of humanities, the way of what the people believe, the way of putting together the people, the way to understand the conflicts and the conflicts of modernity rooted in the conflict of the past. For this reason, we believe that humanities are relevant. But uh, they are not relevant per se. They are relevant because we are in a moment that uh, technologies and art sciences in this moment can provide answers, but we have to provide the questions, the proper questions. And I think this is extremely important because otherwise the risk that we have is a proliferation of technologies without the sense of why we have to use, why we have to generate these technologies. If it is to generate more equality or to generate more monopolies. You know, all these technologies that we are here in our hands, they can serve two different uh, objectives. The first was to give to everybody the possibility to communicate with everybody. On the other side, because is increasing the number of relations, became more and more important the intermediary of this relation. And now the platform, as you say, became the new monopolist. And the risk to have a society that is monopolized is very dangerous. But I feel that what the only possible way to avoid new monopolies, to avoid that the new technology increase disparities and inequality instead of creating new possibility for democracy, is to go deeper in those analyses that are involving people, that are involving the society. I thought to conclude my speech uh, with a quotation. It's a good way to conclude the quotation. And uh, I decided to quote with this quotation. A, a quotation from an old film, from an old movie, called Totò Pepino e la Mala Femmina. Totò Pepino e la Mala Femmina is a, a movie on, uh, on the 50s, where two old men from the south of Italy, Totò e Pepino, went uh, to Milan, to the big city, because uh, the sister son was escaping from the village to the metropolis for his own interest. The two old men became, arrived in the big city, 
And because they thought, as people from a small village, they say, okay, we have to go to the main square, to the central square, because we sit there, and by definition, the, the, the young men go through the, the, the square. Of course, it's necessary. It can pass from, from the center. Because this man was not uh, uh, going in, uh, in the central square, uh, they decided to reach the house of, uh, of this, uh, this boy. And so they decided to go to speak to the authority, to the, to the policeman. And the, in Toto, the, it was the, that uh, the person who traveled, in a very funny language, asked, uh, Noi volevam savoir. Per andare dove dobbiamo andare? Dove dobbiamo andare? That in English means, uh, listen, in order to go where we have to go, where we have to go? Of course, the policemen considered that they were mad. I consider that now we are in the same situation. Technology now is providing all the instruments to reach any ob collective objective. Probably we don't have collective objective. So that I think that we have to work much more to understand where we want to go. Where we want to go as Europe, where we want to go probably as uh, scientists, probably we have to go also in uh, our personal life every day. I think this is the duty of humanities. I think humanities are relevant because it's the wisdom of our fathers working for us. It allows us to reach our personal objectives. Thank you.